Oh, hey, it is a, another holiday makeup video. And this video is a little bit longer, a little intense, but I just wanted to compile kind of some of my best, like, no fail holiday makeup tips for if you're going to a lot of events or, you know, a lot of gatherings and you want to just know that your makeup's going to work and also it's not going to just annoy the crap out of you. Yeah, this is a look I created using them and I think it's pretty great. So the holiday season is upon us and I am definitely in that kind of run around, make as many of the obligations as I can phase. I have compiled like my fail safe holiday event makeup tips and I'm going to kind of turn it into a full face. So I've got a bare face here. I'm going to spray my face a bit here with my Mario Badescu rose water spray. When I bought it I thought for sure it was just going to basically be fancy water but I actually really like it. I went and bought more and it's not that expensive but you don't need it. Yes. I always put a little bit of eye cream under my eye, a light eye cream. You want to be careful it's not too heavy because the last thing you want is to like make your under eye area which can tend to get warm and kind of greasy, even greasier. And if you have really greasy under eyes, skip this step altogether. Next I'm going to moisturize and I like to use my L'Oreal Hydra Genius. I usually use the one for dry skin at night and then during the day I use the one for oily skin. I don't really have oily skin, I used to, um, but I find that using this moisturizer does stop it from becoming like that heavy layer that kind of, you know, midway through your evening turns into an abundance of shine on your skin. This has a more matte finish but it's still really moisturizing. And I think it works for most skin types. Um, it's heavily scented, unfortunately. So I would definitely pick a gel moisturizer that isn't if you are sensitive to fragrance. So I find that if I just immediately go in with makeup, my skin hasn't absorbed the moisturizer. All it's going to really do is kind of cut, stop my foundation from really sticking to my skin, which is the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to let that sit for a second and put on some lip balm. So the number one rule I find about like big events of any sort and especially like high pressure events where there's going to be a lot of people say like a Christmas party or gathering if you have any hint of like oiliness in your skin it's going to be magnified at that event. I don't normally need like a mattifying primer but I always touch up where I would get a little shiny because I know if I'm under any lights, if I'm any sort of stressed, if I'm drinking wine it's going to be magnified. So I'm going to use this Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. This stuff's pretty strong, so I'm only going to place it on those areas where I would get shiny. So I am just tapping in a very light amount. But as you can tell, I don't know if you can see that basically any sort of shininess I had just of my regular skin, gone. And you have to be careful not to use too much of this. It kind of can ball up. And you can use any you know, kind of oil blocking, shine blocking primer. But the trick is to only use it where you would get shiny. So I get shiny right here, right here, right here, and right here. Oh, and right here. I always forget this spot and then I'm always filled with regret. So my face is primed and ready to go. When I'm on the go or, you know, if I just want to be extra sure and I don't want to have to obsess about my blending, I find it actually works best for me to use a darker concealer, a concealer that's about a shade darker than my skin and really warm with kind of those peachy orangey undertones. And I find that that actually works better in a pinch if I'm not going to do a ton of blending than a color corrector. So I'm going to use this Wet n Wild Photo Focus concealer and it's a great concealer and the color I'm using is medium deep so the reason why I say to go a little deeper than your skin instead of lighter is it just if you have areas of hyperpigmentation or dark spots it's just gonna fight it less it doesn't have to fight the depth and the tone this you're just kind of slightly lightening the tone because it's still going to be a little bit lighter than your dark circles or hyperpigmentation but you're mostly doing the color correcting and then it's a lot easier for your foundation to make up the difference. So now I have that on I'm just going to take a little concealer brush. This is my um, Real Techniques concealer brush. I like this brush um, for concealer because it doesn't take away any of the pigmentation the way that a beauty blender can. 
I'm going to dab out the edges. Now as you can see I've covered up most of the darkness and hyperpigmentation on my face and while you can definitely see a bit of color difference between my skin and the darker concealer, it is so much less than the hyperpigmentation and dark circles was and this is going to be so much easier for my foundation to cover. So I'm just taking the RCMA No Color Powder. I love this powder so much and I'm going to press it in over the areas where I had the concealer. This stops all of that work you did um, by covering up the hyperpigmentation from being kind of wiped away as you blend your foundation and it's going to kind of create a bit of a barrier. And now we're going to move to foundation. I find that um, a lot of people, especially me, <laughs> talking about me here, my skin turns green in the winter. It goes from being golden to being olive and I think we all kind of get a little more pallid in the winter and it's hard to infuse life back in your face without it looking really artificial. So I actually use two foundations. I have my winter foundation color, which is the more olive color. That's the Fenty 290. And then I have my summer foundation, which is the Fenty 310. And I like to use both of these strategically. And what it will do is it's going to keep my face looking natural. It's not going to look over tan. It's going to give me a little bit more of a bronzed effect around the perimeter of my face um, without having to add an abundance of bronzer later, which I find just looks really unnatural in the winter time. So to start with the foundation, I'm going to take the lighter color and I'm going to place that at the high areas of my face. So as you see, I've got the bridge of my nose, the center of my forehead, my cheekbone area, around my mouth, and a little bit along my jawline. I'm going to take my buffing brush, my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush, and I'm going to start buffing that into my skin. And as I hit the areas where I color corrected, I'm going to dab in instead of swiping or buffing, just to keep that color correction in place. If you have lines where foundation tends to settle in, a lot of people say to use like a primer to kind of fill that line in and then put your foundation on top. That does not work for me. What I do is I just honestly avoid foundation in that area. I don't completely go without, but I kind of blend around it. And then right before my makeup's completely done, I'll kind of swipe over and get a touch there. But I keep the bulk of foundation just out of that area. So right here. And if I mess up and get a lot there, I'll actually wipe it away. And I find it makes such a big difference, I just don't get makeup settling into it. Go for a matte or semi-matte foundation. Even if you have dry skin, just put on a little extra moisturizer. Because you're going to touch your face. You're going to sweat. And you just need a base that's going to stick more. And luminous foundations just don't stick the same way. They're beautiful. But, you know, you touch your face and you've swiped part of it away. You sweat a little, you have a couple glasses of wine, and it's gone. And you don't want that. So now that I've got the lighter color in the center of my face done, I'm just going to quickly go into my deeper color, my 310. I'm just going to dab this around the perimeter of my face and my cheekbone area. And blend that. So as this kind of sets in and the Fenty foundation does get deeper as it dries, you're going to kind of see this contrast between this lighter center of my face and deeper perimeter. But it's just going to seem like the right color because the center of my face is going to really match with that paler color. But I'm still going to get that glow from the deeper color in a more natural way because it is my summer foundation. It is what my skin turns to when it gets more glowy. My son. My nine-year-old brought home a recorder for Thanksgiving weekend. It's so painful. Also, he's grounded right now. I took away his computer, so he has nothing better to do. And I don't know who's being punished. Me 
for him. All right, so my foundation is on, and I'm gonna quickly contour, and I like to do a cream contour for events. The truth is, is that a powder contour just is not going to last the same. And I'm using the Bobbi Brown foundation stick um, in the color Espresso. I picked this up, it's fairly new I think, but it's the Real Techniques Contour Brush. And you guys, it's the perfect shape for blending my cheek contour without making a giant mess of my face. So I blend by first pulling from the back forward to kind of get that color down to where I want it to stop. And then I blend up. And the narrowness of this brush stops it from getting color everywhere. It gives me control, but it's so soft. Now I'm just going to kind of blend back so that it's lighter here and deeper towards the outer area. But the controlled shape, like this long oval shape, it just really does stop me from accidentally dragging color down my face and turning everything into a muddy mess. And it's soft enough that it's not going to wipe away all my foundation. I've got my contour blended in, and you can see it's really lovely. If it doesn't look 100% perfect when you're done, remember that when you put powder on your face, it's going to actually blend it a little further, and when you're done with your blush and your bronzer and all of that, um, any kind of choppiness, if you've got it somewhat reasonably blended, is going to be almost impossible to see. So I'm going to quickly put a little concealer to highlight under my eyes, and I only use a tiny bit of this because I already did a lot of kind of built-in highlighting by using a lighter foundation in the center of my face. I'm going to quickly blend this out. And as you can see, I'm not taking this light all the way up under my eye. I find that you can get that kind of weird raccoon look if you run that light color all the way up. I actually like to leave the immediate under eye area slightly darker. It just looks more natural. And I'm just gonna quickly set it with powder. I'm going right back into my RCMA No Color Powder. Um, one tip definitely for the holidays is no matter what your favorite powder is, if it has any possibility for flashback, leave it alone for these sorts of parties where there's going to be a lot of photos and things like that because you really just don't want to be called out by your own face powder. So now that I've placed a decent amount of powder over the places that I highlighted with concealer, I'm going to take a fluffier brush, I'm going to use this one, and lightly go into the same powder just so that there's just a little bit on the brush and just dust lightly over the rest of my face. For brows, I like to keep them simple, but I need brows that are going to kind of stay where I put them. So my favorite for that is Silk Brows. It's cheap. I have yet to find a brow gel that works as well as far as keeping my brow hairs in place. And, you know, it's just kind of foolproof. So I'm going to take my soap, spray it with a little water, and I'm going to run my spoolie into the soap and just get some on there. So, see I've got my soap on the spoolie and I'm going to lightly, I'm not loading my hair up with it, just lightly. You don't want it to be too wet, you want it to be kind of thicker than wet because otherwise it's going to start moving your foundation around. And I'm just brushing it through. But see how my brows are just like completely standing at attention, like wherever I place the hairs, they're just, they're not moving. They will stay that way all evening, even if it rains. And now I'm just going to get brow powder and I'm going to quickly fill them in. I find the soap also really helps the powder stick and stay on my eyebrow longer than it would otherwise. I'm using my Anastasia 
Brow Powder Duo in Ebony. And I'm taking my um, number 12 Anastasia Beverly Hills brush. And I'm just going to go into the deeper color and quickly define my lower brow line. And now that I have my like, kind of general shape, I'm going to start blending up from that line. Now I'm just going to take small strokes with the same color and fill in my brow. I'm really into feathered brows right now. It's kind of my thing. Kind of everyone's thing. It's not like I invented feathered brows, but I know they're in. But I also just have been wanting to grow my brows out forever. And I finally am, and I'm trying to take advantage. Now that my brows are all filled in, I'm going to go ahead and highlight under my brows. And I think that this is so important for any kind of night out. It's going to clean up your brow, give you that kind of extra uh, polished finish, and cover up any mistakes and give you your built-in brow highlight without being like way too much. So I'm just using a flat shader brush for this and I'm just going to drag down. Now my brows are done. I highly recommend before any event use a strong eyeshadow base. Don't use concealer. If you have any sort of oiliness in your lids, um, if they get it all warm throughout the event, if you have any sort of hood in your eye, it's going to crease, it's going to smudge, it's going to run, It's your eye makeup is not going to last. Use something really designed to last on the lids without creasing, without smudging. So I like to use the MAC Pro Long Wear Paint Pot and in Lay In Low. I'm going to put that all over my lid. As you can see, I'm, I'm being kind of generous with it. I'm putting a fairly decent opaque layer. It's going to cancel out any kind of coloration on my lid so that my eyeshadow colors go on more true to color. Let that primer like settle. Let that sink in and set and dry a little bit before. Don't just immediately go into your shadows. And then also put a little bit of translucent powder over it just to take away any excess stickiness that would stop your eyeshadow from blending. All right, so my eyes are prepped and ready to go, and I'm gonna go to my standard holiday eye look, which is my halo eye. I just did a video on it that kind of goes more in depth, but um, it's just so easy and foolproof and really fun, and you can do so many different things with it. So I'm gonna start with putting on that brow bone color, and I'm just gonna use this color from NYX. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'm going to brush this all over my brow bone. This is going to give my transition color something to blend into. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go into my transition color. And the transition color is just a shade that is um, about two shades darker than your skin tone. I'm going to use this color Burnt Orange from um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. And I'm going in with a big fluffy brush. I'm going for like a, a round shape to kind of open my eye. But the great thing about this look is you can modify the shape to fit your eye shape. So if you've got a more almond shape eye and you want to accentuate that, just kind of extend out a little more here. If you want your eyes to appear big and wide open, then make it more of a round shape. This is a look that works if you have hooded eyes because it's a roundness that is irrespective of the shape of your lid itself. You just kind of draw a big old circle. So it doesn't matter where you have the folds in your eye or anything like that. They're not going to really impact it. I don't know what you all think about the holidays, but they are so stressful to me. Like, I am not a very social person at all. I get a lot of kind of anxiety around big groups and a lot of obligations and feeling like societally obligated to like make you know like small talk and stuff like that and the holidays can be really tough for that luckily I'm not estranged from any of my family and I know that there are a lot of people who are which makes the holidays even you know harder but I was last year and that was tough but this year I'm really not it's just more 
I get really stressed out from group events. Um, I always get stressed about money, all of the gifts. I'm a single parent, so I spend a lot of time worrying about what I'm getting other people, but like no one's checking for me <laughs> at the holidays. So, you know, I get like one gift usually like from my mom or for like from my brother and sister-in-law and that's it. Um, my kids they'll make me a card or something and I know it's not all about gifts but like year after year you know you spend a lot of time trying to think of how to come up with stuff for other people and to just when when you feel like people aren't putting that out for you it can be a bit draining on top of all of the social obligations and trying to find enough money and you know all of that stuff it can be a lot for people so I've got my transition color down for the base for the halo eye it's whatever deeper matte tone you want. I'm going to try this Deep Plum from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I just think it'll kind of go nice with this sweater I'm wearing and I haven't tried it yet so why not? And you just want to go in with a brush that's a little smaller than the brush you're using for your transition color. So I started with this brush. I'm moving to this brush. I'm just going to lightly dip into that color because I know that these shadows are usually pretty pigmented and I'm going to knock off any excess and then I'm going to draw in that same circle shape, just a little lower than the transition, but I'm going to be really light with it. That first layer of color should be really light. So now that I have that down, I'm going to just go to a smaller brush. I'm going from this brush to this brush, going into the exact same color, and I'm just going to deepen it up a little bit further down. So now that I have deepened up my lid, as you can see here, and I've paid special attention to the inner and outer corners of my eyes to really deepen those up, it's the fun part, the shimmer. Since everyone loves to hate on the Fenty Beauty shadow palette, I figured I would break it out. You know, I, I get it, I do. It's basically glitter, so it doesn't stick the way like I think a lot of people would like it to, but the color combinations in, in a lot of this shimmer I don't find other places and I do really like it. I absolutely must use a glitter primer in order to get it to stick, but it is a really beautiful palette of glitters if you like a lot of glitter and you're not afraid of using like a glitter glue. So I'm going to take my NYX glitter primer and I'm going to take a small stiff brush and I'm going to put that over my lid and then I'm going to pop the color on top. But first I need to pick a color. I think with this plum, I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go into two. I think I'm going to go into first this color right here, and then this color over here. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to place the glue first. So like I was saying about the holidays, you know, it can be a lot of stress. There can be a lot of emotions, especially if you're missing someone or estranged from someone, or if you have kind of toxic family. And I recommend you know, really making some space for yourself and the emotions that you'll be having. Find a space to legitimize that and give it room. If you have grief over the holidays, feel that grief. There's going to be so much pressure to not feel the way that you're feeling and that's not going to help. All right, I'm going to go in with that kind of rosy glitter on a flat shader brush. I'm going to pat that over. See, oh, it's so beautiful. How can anyone hate on this? And then I'm just going to go back into a small brush here um, that I had used when putting that plum color and I'm just going to blend around the border of that glitter so it's a less harsh stop and start. And now I'm going to put a little more glitter glue on my lid just in the center. Gonna go into that gold color, put it over the center. I mean, oh my god, look at that. What? Oh. It's so stunning. So now I have the shimmer all done. Isn't that beautiful? I just I love it so much. Now it's time for liner. 
my number one tip for going out with a kind of a reliable face is smudged liner. Pencil liner in black along your lash line. Why? Because I have lost so many nights to an ever-expanding wing liner that I just can't get right. I'm going to go in with my smudge brush. And there you go. I've just got some lash line definition. Nothing too extreme. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be neat. And so any mistakes aren't going to show. That's the beauty of it. I am far too impatient to like let my coats of mascara dry in between when you're just putting it on waiting. So I stagger out my mascara throughout my steps of makeup. That way I'm doing something else. I'm a little distracted and my layers of mascara actually get to dry and I end up with a much better look at the end when my mascara has had a chance to dry than if it's all clumpy because you know it got half dry and then I went in with second layer. So I'm going to start with my L'Oreal Voluminous Base. So while that base is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do my lower lash line. So I'm going to first go in to that same plum color that I used on my lid, and I'm going to go in with a flat definer brush, and I'm going to pack that along my lower lash line. So now that I have that color along my lower lash line, I'm going to take any kind of small packed brush, like a pencil brush, I'm going to use my Wayne Goss number 20 brush, which I always use. I'm going to go back into my transition color, that shade that was a shade or two darker than my skin tone, and I'm going to run that over the plum. It's just going to blend the whole thing out. Well, hey, will you look at that? My mascara first coat is dry. Time to go in with my Voluminous Lash Paradise. So now I've got my mascara on my top lashes. I'm actually going to do one more coat, so I'm going to let this one dry. But a lot of times people, you know, once they do their top lashes, they immediately dive into their bottom lashes. Don't do that huge mistake, especially if you've put any sort of effort into your eye makeup, because what you will do is the moment you start looking up so that you can reach your lower lashes, your wet mascara on your top lashes is going to start smudging up on your eyelid and then as you try and fix that the mascara you have on your bottom lashes is going to smudge and next thing you know you might as well throw your whole face in the garbage because you've ruined it so don't do that while that dries i'm going to move on to face i'm going to use a really neutral blush this is kind of a kind of a cooler mauve -y tone it's called apricot kiss which is so weird to me there is zero apricot in this but it's by L'Oreal and so when I'm doing a more dramatic eye or lip it works wonderfully. One tip for blush I find um, I love blush I probably put on a little more than a lot of people do because I love it so much but I always run a little on my chin and across my forehead and it just kind of gives that overall flush face look which I find especially in the winter is really nice like you just came in from a cold day um, and it ties it all together. I've got my blush on and now I'm gonna go to bronzer. Oh hey! Let's put on another coat of mascara before we do anything else. Now, because I already did the two color foundation, I don't really have to go heavy with bronzer at all. So I'm going to use this big fluffy precision powder brush by Sephora. For bronzer, I honestly use the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in just a warm, deeper shade than my skin tone. I've had a really hard time finding a bronzer I like. So I'm just going to very lightly touch some of that along the border between my contour and my blush. One really cool tip on lower lash mascaras, get a tubing mascara. This is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara. I love it. But there are a lot of other tubing mascaras. The great thing about a tubing mascara is it's not necessarily waterproof. Um, it can come off with water, but it won't smudge and it won't run. This Clinique one is great too because it's got such a tiny wand. It's like the perfect size for lower lashes. Oh man, we're almost done, y'all. Um, highlighter. I always go more subtle for things where I know there's going to be a lot of photography because it can catch the light in really weird ways. Go for a neutral tone. I like kind of tones that are a mix between a champagne and a gold, um, so they kind of go with any look. So I've got like the Maybelline Master Chrome is always really good. This Milani Sun Glow um, highlighter I just got and it's really great. 
and then also Fenty Beauty in Me, Money, and Hustler Baby. It seems like it would be too light, and I didn't buy it at first, and then I wanted to see if that softer side would have that same kind of wet, smooth feeling, and it actually has enough of a golden undertone to not be ashy, even as light as that is. It works beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with that. I'm really into a more subtle highlight over the cheekbones lately. I'm just, I'm tired of accentuating my texture. As you can see though, it's a nice subtle glow. It's not extreme. I'm going to take a smaller brush. This is a Morphe Y15. And I'm going to go down the bridge of my nose. And I'm going to get my Cupid's Bell. And I'm going to quickly spray my face with setting spray. Here's a question I think a lot of people have when they're looking at like fancier makeup looks is lashes. Do you wear fake lashes? You absolutely do not have to. And I would say for this look, I wouldn't. I think I got enough volume from my mascara. But if you want to wear fake lashes, I recommend sticking with lashes like this. Why? Because a fake lashes are uncomfortable as fuck, and anyone who tells you otherwise is a liar. Or they've been wearing fake lashes so long that they just can't feel their eyelids anymore. They're uncomfortable, they pop up, they're unreliable. The more you need them to stick, the less likely they will stick. But I find that half lashes and accent lashes do not do that. You see, you just get that little extra oomph. It's not overly dramatic. But with the mascara I have on, it complements it really well. This is so comfortable. It doesn't really feel like there's anything on. It's going to hold so much better throughout the day. It's not going to lift up because it doesn't have the tension of trying to hold the whole curve of your eye. And so it's not going to start popping up on the ends. It, it can be much more straight and still stick. Here's some tips um, for lips for events like this. If you're going to be eating and drinking and you don't want to constantly worry about the st state of your lips, I would recommend going with a bold lip gloss or a long wearing more neutral toned lip. I wouldn't really recommend going with a long wearing like red. Um, you can go with red liner and a red lip gloss and that will work. But the thing about long wearing lip colors is when they start to give out, the more vibrant that color, the more obvious it is as it's kind of chipping away as you eat and drink. So a neutral long wearing color, it's not going to be as obvious because it's going to kind of blend more in with your skin tone and that's a beautiful option for if you want that color to just stick and stay. And a lip gloss is going to fade with more grace. It's just going to come off in lighter layers than a long wearing one which will completely chip away. You can easily smack your lips back together and kind of get some of that redistributed and it's just going to be a, a prettier way to go about the evening if you want a more vibrant color. Okay my lips are done and I went with my Colourpop lip liner in Lady and then on top of it I put on this L'Oreal Infallible 8 hour pro gloss in the color Dolce de Leche. And I really do think it's a beautiful combination that kind of goes with this whole look. But y'all, I almost forgot my inner corner highlight. One tip I have for inner corner highlight, if you're going to be going out and you want it to last a while, is you really are going to want to wet your brush or even use a little bit of um, glitter primer to get it to really stick because that's where my eyes tend to water. You know, I'll rub my eyes if it gets a little crusty. And this will just increase your chances of it actually like hanging out for a second. So I'm just going to grab the tiniest, tiniest amount of the glitter primer and press it around my tear duct area. And then I'm going to take my highlight color and a small flat brush, press it in. And here we are. This is our finished look from start to finish. We have a really nice beautiful festive glittery eye and a really lovely lip that's going to get you through the evening without looking like a disaster as it wears away. My final tips for holiday get together makeup is to definitely bring a makeup bag with you and the most important things I keep in there is a little compact, some blotting papers, and I always pop 
my eyelash glue in here if I'm wearing eyelashes. You just never know. What if you start crying? What if you get splashed with water? What if it just decides, your eyelash decides to be disrespectful as fuck and run off your face? This is going to save you so that you don't have to rip the other one off and then have a weird looking lash line all night. Q-tips. I find these are so important. If my eye starts watering like on the outer corner, I can just take the Q-tip and quickly smudge it away without messing my whole look up. If my mascara starts smudging, I can do the same. Anything like that where you want to be able to kind of clean things up and not mess up your whole look, these are priceless. And I always put whatever gloss or lip color I'm wearing in here in case I need to touch it up. And that's about it. Those are my tips. I hope this helps you keep looking fabulous throughout the holiday season and I hope that you make good choices, that you stay safe this season, and that you practice some self-care and that you're really kind to yourself. Look as fabulous as you want to and also spend a lot of time with no makeup on, in your pajamas, eating cookies. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Leave any comments or questions you have below and I'll see you around later. Bye guys.